G'day coppers. Um, so I've decided to uh, make a YouTube channel today uh, just to bring you guys along with uh, the projects I get along with. Uh, so today I decided to uh, make a start on this uh, 50cc junior uh, motorbike. So I'll bring you along with the travels and see what we can find. It does sometimes run and start, but it'll run for about 30 seconds and then die. So I'm sort of figuring it's something to do with the carburetor. So we'll pull that down and have a look and see what we can see. Uh, I've got a few other projects in line alongside this one. I've got also a Chinese um, four-wheeler that needs a bit of TLC. Uh, with this one it runs very hot after about five minutes or so of runtime the exhaust will pretty much be glowing so I sort of figure that's something to do with the valves or uh, maybe running too rich or lean I'm not too sure but that will be a later video as well as what I've deemed a nickname of Murphy's Law Galore. This thing is a O2 CR80. Um, I've been having a lot of problems with it lately. It's had a, um, a top end rebuild, um, carby rebuild, gasket rebuild, almost every rebuild you can think of bar a bottom end. And it runs when it wants to and it will run great when it wants to but it will have hissy fits and then it, it just won't run at all it'll keep failing plugs and it just doesn't want to go <clears throat> so that will be another video as well and this thing in the background that runs perfectly fine not an issue with that but we'll make a start on this little 50 and see what we can make of it. So I'm going to start, I believe, I should probably get the uh, exhaust or expansion chamber out of the way first, as it's almost right in the way of the, the carby. <coughs> So I'll pull that off and then we can uh, start looking into what what we can do with this. Unfortunately with this one I didn't get the uh, muffler or silencer with it, so it is quite loud, but my main goal for this is to mainly just have, well not for myself, but uh, finish it up, get it all running right and sell it off to, to some young, young kid that needs it or wants it. So that's that's the goal for this one. I I have no personal use for this one. <coughs> uh, what I've done so far is um, we had 
<coughs> when I bought this, uh, it came with this new motor on it, but uh, was just loosely fitted and the previous owner didn't know how to um, more or less convert it to suit this bike. And it had uh, this, uh, uh, not sure what you'd call it, uh, like a converter, torque converter sort of thing. And so it's a complete different design. This one had the the gears on the, the outside there, whereas this one runs through, has another chain through here, and then the gear coming out the back there. So I managed to get that right, but I just don't have the, the hardware to fill in these spots, so I'm hoping I can get some uh, long enough hardware to suit that. It is it is quite quite a long distance, so uh, hopefully I can find some hardware that will suit that. But for now it's, it's more or less just a project to get it going. Uh, I might have easier access at that carburetor now. So as far as I'm aware, this uh, carburetor and motor is brand new, just uh, the, the previous owner didn't know, as I said, how to convert it to suit this bike. I had a little play with it yeah, to get all that sorted. The air filter looks really good, it's still got a bit of oil on it. So we'll leave that be. like maybe a four mil allen wrench on key to get those main bolts out. I will also have to drain the fuel as there's no um, pet to, to turn it off. Well there is actually but right down at the carburetor. So I'll drain what, what fuel's in it. as it could be quite filthy. Very hard to see. Yeah, a little bit of dirty fuel in there. Okay, so find something to drain that into. While we're at it, um, I'll show you what somewhat of uh, what sort of compression we've got. It's actually really good. It's got very good compression, so and I have had it running before. It does run very good, but just seems to run itself dry of fuel. So I'm. Um, 
kind of thinking that it's just had old fuel sitting in it. If not, maybe this uh, filter that's on here could be all gum gummed up. And But we'll have a look and see what we can find. Try somehow get this in here. Shocking. Now the fun part is uh, getting it out again without tipping it all out. Oh. That's actually a good sign though. It means that um, that filter isn't actually blocked or gummed up with old fuel. more fuel in there than first anticipated. Ooh. Get a better container for that. Stay. There was a little bit of oil in the bottom of this container, so don't mind all the, the black gunk. Was, the fuel uh, coming out initially was very, very dark, so I'm sort of thinking um, the fuel would have been very old. But we'll let this drain out, um, give the carb a good clean up, uh, throw some fresh fuel in it and see, see what we can get out of it. While we're at it, there's also it's also a little drain just here, and it's mounted there. So we'll see what we can get out of the bottom of the float there, or float bowl. very very thick and oily oh and smells really bad too 
So the nut or oh, screw actually looks quite good. It doesn't look like there's any crap all over it. So it's a reasonable sign. I think there was just a lot of oil in there. Very oh, very varnishy smelling. See if we can get this throttle off. Okay. Oh, she's nice and tight. All right. The needle looks quite clean. Let's we'll see, we'll see what we can get from it. Okay, so I'll try take the the whole uh, carby assemb assembly off now. Okay. All right. Let's get this up to the bench and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, so we're here at the bench. Uh, gonna put a little bit of pre-mix in here, just as a basic cleaning solution. Just out of curiosity, I'll have a look inside this uh, pet, see what we've got. I 
also I'll get a little container. That actually looks uh, reasonably clean. A little bit of crap on the bottom there, but apart from that, that looks that looks really good. So I'll take the entire fuel line system off now. These floors are annoying. That looks reasonably clean as well. A little bit of oil trapped in there as well, so I think that could have been a lot of the cases. Uh, all the oil had just sunk to the bottom, and a little uh, seal there that goes on the bottom of that. Make sure I don't lose him. I wonder if we can get this little rubber out here. We can, good. Yeah, very, very oily in there. <coughs> Throw that in to clean. Let's see what this uh, idler screws at. Well, it's out. It's out very far. I'm not actually sure how how the idler screw would be set, but we'll learn as we go. All that remains now is the float, the float ball. I'll get that off. Okay, that's a very weird setup, very weird. So it seems the, the float quite literally just floats in the float bowl and ra rises up and pushes on the, on the uh, needle here. Very strange.
gaskets in good shape too. Needle looks to be in okay shape. get this main jet off that try get this out that might uh, pull the might be the whole emulsion tube that one I'm not too sure just six millimeter Yeah, that's bringing the whole emulsion tube out, that's good. And I actually can't see through that. So that could be a lead to our uh, issue. I can see through. Uh, very very slightly yeah just full of oil there we are that's better okay that's about all we'd want to to dump in the fuel as I don't want those gaskets to uh, warp or anything. Let's see, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, just a whole bunch of oil. I barely see a, a bit of fuel. It's just all oil. So I may have to pull that spark plug and. See if that isn't failed. The float floats, so that's good. give this a, a <coughs> excuse me a uh, quick blow out with the compressor I'll 
give everything a once over with some uh, brake clean as well just to try to get the remnants of all the oil off it that will keep that aside for now focus. There is a little bit of a mark where the where it seats but I'm sure that won't matter. Oh it's a it's a rubber seal actually. I can sort of breathe, lightly uh, hook my nail in there so I'm sure that's that's fine. Also that over there is the old motor that uh, came with it so I have had a look over it and all the the bore and the piston and bottom end all seems fine so I've just sort of left it there to in case we need spare parts and if need be I can always pull it down and bugger off always pull it down and uh, see what it looks like if we ever need parts looking pretty good now we'll try I'm just gonna pour this into my oil collection and try to get rid of it before we start mixing it into that and start making that very oily So I just hit that with a little bit of uh, brake cleaner. That's looking pretty good. Let's see. Draw this one off. That's looking really good. No corrosion or what I was expecting. I was expecting a fair amount of corrosion and what not but it's actually just mainly a lot of oil so I believe I'll definitely have to look into that spark plug and see see if that isn't failed I'll just hit this with a bit of brake clean and see what we can uh, get from it okay so I gave that a good once over it's looking a lot cleaner now I'll we'll just get some of this uh, crap off around here it doesn't matter too much it is on the outside but 
just to be safe. Very good. Okay, so I reckon we should be alright now to start reassemble. Just take these uh, gaskets aside and give a bit of this um, hit some of these with a bit of brake cleaner. They do have there's a fair amount of oil on a lot of those parts. The gaskets I'll simply just uh, rub dry with the, the cloth. I'll try and get most of the oil off these parts. There we are, that's mainly just brake clean in there. We'll give it a quick once over with some air. There we are, that's looking a lot better. Okay, so now we can start reassembling. Just give these gaskets a wipe down.
<coughs> now before I get any further I do want to um, uh, put the where is it the pet back on and then uh, blow through the fuel and just make sure that that uh, float and needle is doing what it's supposed to do just in case we've got any sealing issues I'll get these in a little bit and throw that back in. Just make sure it's above that metal ring clip. Is turning. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Okay. The flies are quite attracted to the uh, fluorescent light. I do apologise about the noise. Okay, closed. Off. 
think it's leaking somewhere out of here. I may have put something backwards. I'll just double check that. no specific seal for that so that's the only way I can picture it going this That thing goes no. Maybe after put that in, then that no. does seem somewhat better you can only try but I highly doubt that that's it as now this has no place to sit the little clip Tried as it didn't work the other way, so put that facing upward. Then this one can come downward. No, there's just far too much tension on that. <coughs> <coughs> So, why is it leaking? It seems to be the only way I can picture it going. I'm about to lose that again. So we'll try again, but see what happens this time. Something may just have been out of place.
that just seems far too loose. I can tell it's it's going to leak out of there. There's nothing pushing that down onto the the other seal. What am I missing? I'll try blow through it. It's in the off position. No, nope, still a ton of air coming out of here. Okay, off it comes again. couldn't imagine this uh, rubber seal going a set way as both sides are exactly identical all four holes are identical and down in there so that seems to be the only way it sits does just seem to be sitting too low. There's a bit of a gap before it actually comes out so it is going to have movement. But there's no other gaskets. sitting a lot lower than this this face here so there has to be some reason why it's not sitting up like it should it sits far too far in so it's going to have that slop and in and out movement even with with these plates pushing down on it now this one does fit in between there, but this little clip doesn't have the pressure to push it down. And I, when I just tightened those up the last time, I did do it quite tight. So it was all the pressure I could put on it without damaging it. I couldn't imagine this having a, a set way either, really. This side is a lot more <coughs> coarse. So I imagine that would be the side that goes down. And this side would be the side that sits up. Try again. Third time's a charm. We hope. This one facing upward. And that black clip was definitely not on, on top of the 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 silver one. I 
if all else fails, I'll just put it all back together and I will obviously have to watch over the footage and I'll see how it came apart, but I'm quite certain that's that's the way it came apart. Could be wrong. does feel a bit more solid now. I, I kept pressure under this part and kept pushing that second clip upward. It does seem to have a bit more pressure now and very to little, very low to no movement. We'll see how that goes. And there's a fair gap under there. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not, <coughs> as fuel's only travelling behind, behind that section. But even still, if I'm blowing through here and air's coming out the top or bottom or wherever, that means fuel can do the exact same thing. But I'm pretty much out of uh, storage space, so I'll re-look over it and we'll see you again soon.